Can I ask you to put your pens down and look up for a minute? Not going to show you the whole answer yet, but I see you writhing in pain. And um, I'm going to try and nudge you a little bit in the right direction and make sure we're all on the same page. And then you'll still have a bit of work to do to think about how to actually answer the question. Okay? Now part of what you're all struggling with, and it's really interesting, um, I don't think I've seen the same diagram on any of the 20 plus pages that you have here in the room. Everyone's is slightly different. And one of the reasons why you've all come up with different diagrams off of the same question, right, is that there is sufficient information in this question that there are many different ways to represent it. And in fact, that's going to be key to the way that we solve it. I will point out, some ways are better than others, okay? So when you think about, for example, the first uh, couple of parts here that say a tower is built on flat ground, three tourists are observing the tower, and then in the third line, it starts to talk about bearings, right? So this is information about what's happening on the ground level from the bird's eye view, if you like, okay? And then they talk about north, they talk about east, and so on. But then in the immediate next line, this is what makes it three-dimensional, right? In the immediate next line, Rather than talking about bearings, they talk about angles of elevation. So we introduce this up-down aspect to things, right? Now you can draw one diagram which encapsulates all of it. I am actually going to use a second diagram by the end of it, but here's how I'm going to set about. If you want to, if you're looking at your diagram, you're like, I have no idea if this is on the right track. And if you've got a bad diagram, you already have no way to interpret, like, what's the thing I'm trying to work toward, right? I'm going to show you a diagram. You don't have to use this exact one, but I think it captures all the information that we need. Here's the tower. The first thing they talk us about is this A, B, and C, and A is due north. Now, because I've drawn the tower as an object with height, um, I would normally indicate north as up on my page, but that's not going to be very helpful for me on this particular way of doing it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to imagine this in three dimensions, and I'm going to have north sort of going off into the distance like so. There it is, going that way. And I'm going to place A somewhere on this line. It's due north. I don't know how far, uh, but that's part of the question. Okay. Then we talk about B and C. C is due east. Now it doesn't say due east of what, but hopefully there's enough of a clue in that sentence that tells you what it's due east of. What do you think C is due east of? Hmm. Let's read the sentence again. This is so important, right? A is due north of the tower, C is due east of the tower. Of the tower. It's clearly what's implied. It's so sneaky, little tiny words or phrases, and obviously you'd get a whole different diagram if you said C was due east of A. Different diagram altogether. It is due east of the tower. Now, because I'm trying to represent three dimensions here, I'm going to have east going off in that direction. Okay, now if you look at it as a whiteboard, right, this angle here is not 90 degrees, but I want it to be 90 degrees, so I'm looking at this sort of isometrically, if you like. So I'm going to place C, where did I place it before? I think roughly here. Okay, you'll see later on why I didn't use all of this space that I drew there. Okay, A, C, and then they talk about, I want the right color here, here it is. They talk about B being between A and C on their line of sight. Now admittedly that's a phrase we don't use very frequently, but it kind of tells you what it means, right? If A was to look at C, or C was to look at A, on that line of sight, let's draw it in, on that line of sight, B is somewhere on there, right? Somewhere in the middle. We don't know where it is, but it's going to be somewhere on there. I'm going to place it roughly here. Okay, so I think we've captured all of the uh, flat ground information so far. Are you okay with that? Tower, A, B, and C. Now we need to introduce some verticality to this, right? And you can see, or you're, you're about to see, why I've chosen the colors that I have. We're going to have triangles of plenty flying around this thing. We already have more than one here. But I'm going to use the colors so that I can distinguish the triangles from each other. So they talk about A and its angle of elevation to the top of the tower. Right? So this is something on the ground and the angle of elevation is going to go up like so. And from memory I think that's 26 degrees? 26. So if you like I've got my red triangle which is all to do with A and the tower. Then the next one I think they give us is about B, right? They're just doing it respectively. So A, B and C. So from B to the tower I actually am missing a line. I don't have a ground line for B. Because all angles of elevation, as well as angles of depression, they're all measured from the 
horizontal, right? So this is the horizontal along the ground from B to the tower, and then he looks up, or she looks up, and that gives me the 28, yeah? So I've got an orange triangle here, which is all about B and the tower, and I'm gonna complete, ugh, I'm gonna complete it here. There we go. And this is my angle of elevation from C, and it's my 30 degrees, okay? Now, there's just one last thing. Whoopsie daisy. I'm so uncoordinated. There's one last thing that we need. That's the actual question. What are they actually asking for? Look carefully. Bearing of B from, from the tower. From the tower, okay? Now, because a bearing is, is it's a flat ground question, right? So I'm going to go down on the ground here. The bearing to B, we usually measure this from north, right? Well, handily, I already have north on my diagram. There it is. Okay, so from north, I'm going to turn clockwise to get to B. That's the angle that I'm after. Okay, so I'm going to pause there. I haven't done any work in actually like calculating any of the extra information I need, but this is the diagram I'm going to use. It's not the only one. Um, it starts to get confusing when I put in some of the information we're going to determine onto this diagram. It's already very busy. It's going to get even busier. But if you didn't, if you were struggling, you're like, is my diagram right? I don't know. I can tell you with confidence, this diagram has all the information on it that the question has, and it's represented in a consistent way. So I'm gonna let you now from there, use some of the trigonometry that you know, and see where you can get from there.